Today, labelling pre-packed food. What should we be told about where it's from and how healthy it is for us? Better European cooperation on transplanting human organs. How can we make it simpler and safer? And the fate of the bluefin tuna hangs in the balance as MEPs debate a complete ban on trade in the fish. Hello and welcome to this edition of Europal TV News. And we begin with the labels on the packaging of the food we eat. Just how much do we want and need to know about its origin and whether it contains a lot of sugar or salt or fat? Andreas Rogal compiled this report. Suppose your New Year's resolution was to eat more healthily. But the trouble is, you never have time. So you go for the ready-cooked meal. But how can you tell whether it meets your requirements? What and how information is displayed on food varies greatly in Europe. But that is about to change, as there is a new EU directive underway. Well, we would like the MEPs to vote for a multiple traffic light labelling scheme on the front of the pack, because the evidence shows that that works best for consumers. It's not about telling consumers what to eat, it's about enabling them to make informed choices. Studies have shown that this scheme displaying sugar, salt and fat contents would be popular with consumers. But in today's committee vote, it was rejected. As Parliament's rapporteur points out, consumers aren't the only ones to consider here. This regulation shall uh, um, help um, the food sector, shall give uh, more legal security. And it is uh, legislation um, for better harmonisation inside the internal market. Small and medium-sized businesses make up around 80% of the food sector. They are particularly keen on the directive stated aim to cut red tape. But big food business also has been lobbying hard. Many issues are still very much disputed, like how much, if any, additional labelling rules can be implemented by member states, something the draft of the Parliament's Internal Market Committee found out the hard way. I was uh, surprised by the fact that there was a majority in IMCO to, to delete two whole chapters concerning national provisions. I uh, reacted by voting against my own report. Today's vote of the committee in charge of food safety lasted three hours. Only very few compromises between the different interest groups and convictions could be found. Negotiations in the run-up to the first reading in plenary, scheduled for May, will be intense. Every day, more than 50,000 Europeans are waiting for organ transplants. So, a proposal before the Parliament aims at more cooperation between member states on organ donation to improve efficiency and safety. One country where the system already works well is Spain. This report by Arno de Molda. I have a donor. It's a 46-year-old man, blood type P+. Dr. Miguel Casares from Getafe Hospital in Madrid has just found an organ donor who died from a brain hemorrhage. The information is relayed in real time by a transplant coordination center. There's not a minute to lose. In another hospital in the Spanish capital, the receiver awaits the precious organ, a lung. My main mission is to find all potential donors in this hospital and coordinate the whole process so that in the end all the potential donors can become real donors. Spain leads the world in organ donation. In 2008, almost 4,000 transplantations took place. The number of donors in this country is two times higher than the European average. The key to success was the creation 20 years ago, in 1989, of a national transplantation organization and the development of the Spanish model. That means taking fully trained people, transplantation coordinators, in all the hospitals where you can find a donor. Another reason for its success is the training of hospital personnel. Psychologists are in charge of explaining to medical staff about how to receive and inform families of potential donors. These are families who must be convinced relatively quickly as soon as an organ becomes available. I would say that above all it's about putting yourself in the place of this family, understanding their suffering, their pain, and from that point put them in a situation where they can help the other family. Today in Europe, 12 people die each day from a lack of suitable donors. In an effort to resolve this, the European Union is preparing a directive. This law aims to define quality standards and improve coordination between member states. Spain will continue to be the leading example. 
Well, today's guest is the Spanish Socialist member Andres Perelu, who sits on the committee considering the organ transplant proposals. I spoke to him when he came into the studio earlier this afternoon. Andres Perelu, let me ask you first of all, what are you trying to achieve with this increased cooperation? We are trying to make sure that persons that need just an organ to stay alive will survive. But those 56,000 Europeans waiting for an organ to live, that have the right conditions to live, will stay alive. But you, you say we, we need these new coordinators in every country. Some member states say they've got a perfectly good system already. Well, no. If we had a perfect system in every single member state, we wouldn't still have 56,000 Europeans waiting. Maybe we'll have some, but not so many. We need to make the system more efficient. If we compare national systems, we see that some work better than others, because it's not only a matter of solidarity between citizens. We have to make the most of this solidarity with a proper coordination at hospital and nation level. We saw the Spanish example a moment ago. What's the one thing you would point to in the Spanish example which makes the system work well there? The Spanish example, people think the reason is we show great solidarity, and we do. But there are, according to surveys, 13 countries in the EU that show more solidarity than the Spaniards. But we have a good professional team in every hospital that knows how to ask for an organ, how to talk to the family. There's a hospital coordinator coordinating the national organizations, and the national organization is transparent and has a fair waiting list that people accept as something necessary and reasonable, very well organized, and they entrust them with the organ. And what about the question of living donors? There is the possibility there for all, all sorts of abuse of the system, isn't there? People being paid money for their organs. No. Both the directive and the action plan that the Parliament is passing prevent this from happening. All groups agreed that donations will always be unpaid and voluntary, and the national systems will make sure this doesn't happen. But we need living donors because in some countries there are less accident and it's been proved that it is useful we can prolong the life of other persons with living organ donations. With proper policing and observing the rules, we can achieve this. And it's Perelio. Thank you very much indeed. Gracias, usted. And now the rest of the news. Ready to act. Eurozone countries have finally put forward a financial assistance plan to bail Greece out of crisis. The plan will go into action on Athens' demand. Little is known about the plan concerning several billion euros. That 27 EU countries must first approve it. Unemployment. The EU is on the slide with more than 4 million jobs lost in 2009. The most affected sectors are the manufacturing industry, construction, trade, transport and communications. Stop violence against women. The Parliament continues to lead the way. MEPs, European Commission and the UN met once again at the Parliament to debate the problem. At stake is the construction of a common strategy against all forms of violence against women in Europe. Maritime Partnership. Experts from European Chambers of Commerce gathered around the same table in the Parliament. From now on, they will share information and work together to shape maritime policy in the EU over the next five years. The maritime sector covers entire sections of the economy, such as transport, trade and tourism. Finally, the bluefin tuna. It's the staple of a huge fishing industry, but stocks are falling fast. This report compiled by Hugh Weinstock. The end of the line for bluefin tuna means a shock to our pockets. In just 10 years, stocks have declined by 60%, and the results are no more evident than in this fishmonger in Brussels. There are fewer sales than before. Some customers don't want to buy it because they say it's becoming extinct. The very future of bluefin tuna hangs in the balance. In Doha this week, their fate will be decided at the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Supported by the EU, the fish may be added to the famous Appendix 1 of endangered species, imposing a total ban on international trade. With three quarters of all Atlantic tuna being imported by Japan, it is the sushi culture that is now under threat. Japan, as the main importer of bluefin tuna, has clearly said that it opposes this ban. This country is negotiating with many producers, such as North African countries, who are also against it. So it's better to stop international trade now. It's better to take measures to compensate uh, fishermen and the fishing sector and at the same time 
keep domestic trade open. But will protecting fish endanger fishermen? Decisions are taken because there's a huge green lobby behind it. We are in the process of killing the small fishermen. We're killing the people with know-how. A select group of MEPs will travel to Doha for the final decision. However, member states hope to defer any final decision on bluefin tuna until next year. More on all those stories here on EuropalTV.eu. Thanks for watching and bye for now.